a massive penalty if it if it doesn't go according to plan. Yeah. And and you're also building your social capital in the program because exactly. now you're starting to network and you know an actuary at least. And in addition to your business owner, who you get to know very well over the two weeks, you know at least two other actuaries because of the AIM program. Yeah. So you really start to feel more comfortable and more connected to the work environment. Yeah. And our hypothesis, although this will be very difficult to measure, is that that will lead to you being far more productive in your early career. Yes. It will... Also, in theory, uh, we believe, help you with your exam progression and your, both your academics and your career because of the level of comfort and confidence that you're mm. starting your career with. Mm. Very much so, very yeah. much so. And the next question I want to ask you is very open-ended, but it's to do with your future plans. You obviously have your fingers in many parts. You've talked about research, you've talked about the various boards that you serve on, education, the aim, etc. What are your hopes in those various spaces going forward? Hmm. Wow. Um, I think I'm going to start with my hope for myself. Um, I think I'm learning how to deal with the fact that the world is much more complex than I originally yeah. thought, um, that my feelings are a lot more complex than I originally thought. Yes. And so I guess I'm... My main goal for myself is to find my place of being super happy and at peace and yeah. kind of enjoying the places I'm working in. Um, and my hope then is for actuarial education to become this place of really robust um, creation of problem solvers. You know, yeah. like a, and by that, I mean being able to be like much more accommodating of people with very different backgrounds who think very differently, who have much different skill sets. Yeah. Um, maybe even become less obsessed with this idea of perfection. Yes. And, you know, it's it's a very linear way to think. Um, because I think the the world's problems um, of the, you know, the future world's problems are going to require much different, better thinking than what yeah. we've done to date. And I think the actuarial profession has got such an important and huge role to play in that because actuaries have a very, very valuable skill set. They're, yeah. they're able to deal with complexity, but also reason and look at evidence and be logical um, and at the same time apply kind of scientific rigor to real world problems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so my hope is, yeah, for me to enjoy this journey of mm. creating the space, um, creating some diversity in the way we're teaching uh, actuarial students and hopefully produce, yeah, problem solvers. Mm. I think another, another thing I would ask is that, I mean, we have this concept of work-based learning, right, which is saying you can't get your actuarial designation until you have time in the workplace where you, you know, get experience in various areas to make sure that you are a robust actuary. I think students kind of view that as a sort of necessary evil. But given your educational background and your emphasis, how would you describe the role of work-based learning and also secondary to that, how based should a student approach that? Um, and not just be like, okay, I'm just going to do this thing so that I can get faster. Um, what would be your sort of view around that? Um, so my view would be that work-based learning can really make you much better at your job, at your academics. And so if it's used as a process to really reflect on where are my skills gaps? Yeah. What do I want to work on for myself, not for anybody else? Yeah. So my view is that work-based learning can be a very important tool to do your own thinking for your own career. Yeah. And if you use it as a tool for reflection, being able to articulate your knowledge that you've gained, being able to say what you've learned in the process, yeah. then it's kind of like just your personal development plan. Yeah. And it's also... It would be such a nice thing to look back on as you journal, you know, journal yeah. your kind of growth yeah. in your career. And as you progress in your career, that becomes far more important than what mark you got for contingencies. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> you know, uh, which was the subject I felt. <laughs> 
<laughs> a little bit triggering. <laughs> Just a little. Um, so I think work-based learning is something that, again, maybe because of our background in our education, we we fear the skill a little bit yes. because we are unaware of it. And maybe we think, oh, this is not not as important as the technical mathematical yeah. formulae. Yeah. But um, as you become, as you progress with your career, those are some of the skills that you end up really using to influence people and to actually get what you want, yeah. uh, you know, out of your own kind of work. Um, and so... The work-based learning process, I think, is very fearful. And I think it's sad when students see that as a hindrance because they tend to then um, let that delay their qualification. Yes, I've had numerous friends who have finished all the exams and then work-based learning takes like five or six years just because they couldn't really get around to the admin of it. Yeah, and I think that's... Well, they see it as admin fundamentally. Yes, and I think that's... So my question... Would, uh, that I think would be valuable to look there, look at here is what might you be assuming yes. that is stopping you from writing out your reflections on what you've been learning? Yeah. Uh, because once you, if some of those assumptions can be understood, then perhaps you could convince yourself that what you might be assuming is not true. Yeah. Um, that's very actual as well. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah it's like Just that's an assumption we could test. <laughs> um, and and actually the the, the recipe is, is really quite simple. So for each skill, you've got to list uh, list what your skills gaps were. So yeah. what experience did you have? What what did you look to grow into? Mm-hmm. How did you close those skills gaps? Yeah. And then what what's your reflection on what you learned as you were doing it? Yeah. And if you and if you just take probably a few minutes really on each of these questions per yeah. skill, you could document something quite comprehensive because it's about your own journey. Yeah. And the work-based learning can become quite a quick exercise. Yeah. Whilst at the same time being treated with kind of joy and, you know, uh, and helping your yeah. learning journey anyway. I think also something to note there, maybe two things to note there is firstly, if you do it periodically, it becomes less of a schlep, right? Like when you finish a task where let's say you have to go through those various things where it's like, where were the gaps? How did I fill them, et cetera? If you reflect quickly, then you don't have to constantly be like, did I do a piece of work that actually I filled the gaps or had to upskill on? But yeah. if you're not reflecting, you don't remember. But then also I think it sets you up well for post-qualification when you have to do CPD yes. with your continuous professional development because that is what CPD is, right? It's saying... How are you constantly keeping relevant? And a big part of that is actually reflecting on the skill set that you have. And so for me, work-based learning was setting you up, making you practice that skill that you should actually be implementing for the rest of your career. And um, I don't think students see it that way. And that's I think, is actually a really important positioning because it, it, it is a skill in and of itself. Yes. yes. And, and um, reflection is not something I think comes easily. Yeah. Um, and is a sort of like a muscle that needs to be flexed. But I, I think another question I would ask you, and maybe a closing question, mm-hmm. would be what advice or encouragement would you give to an aspiring actuary? And I think sort of a caveat to that would be considering what you would have really benefited from hearing when you were in that space um, and kind of putting yourself in the shoes of a listener that's like, I don't even know if this is for me. I don't know if I'm going to be replaced by AI. I don't know. You know, like all these various fears um, and thoughts that students have. How would you just kind of not still those fears, but maybe put a little bit of perspective to that? Mm -hmm. So when I was at university, I don't think I particularly enjoyed the studying so much. You know, I I enjoyed being a student. Yes. I didn't quite... I would say, you know, take full advantage of the learning process. And I was quite frustrated and often asking myself whether I was studying the right thing. Oh. Um, and in my case, what the, the actuarial career has turned out to be something that is very, very flexible yeah. and very customizable. Yeah. I've always found that I can use my skill sets to work on problems that I'm interested in. Yes. And so that is the first thing I would say is that it really opens many, many doors yeah, for you. It does. Um, and I would also say that wherever you are in your process, um, kind of try to ask yourself your own questions. Um, take your kind of first step. 
Yes. You know, what what is it that that are your own questions to ask? Not not what is expected from other people. Yeah. Maybe the actual career turns out to be great for you, and maybe it doesn't. But either way, the fact that you are connected to it means that you've been learning something and you've been exposed to lots of really great skills. Yeah. And so I think one day, uh, if you're a student and might not necessarily be appreciating the skills now, uh, it is it is definitely a set of skills that is so kind of implementable and so useful in yeah. the real world. Um, and then I would also encourage people to say that everybody is capable of doing brilliant, unique thinking. Yeah. Um, and so I think we all have an obligation to ourselves <laughs> yes. to ask ourselves, what is it that's going to bring the best out of me? And sure. what do I need to do that? And spend time understanding that, right? Because yeah. I think so often with actual students, I always think it's going to be in specific spaces, yeah. you know, like with pricing or reserving or evaluating. And sometimes it's not. My, I think my best thinking is done when I'm lecturing and someone asks me a question, to be honest. Like that for me is the space where I think I flourish the most. But that's not strictly actual. And so I think maybe not, not also cordoning yourself off into some sort of niche that you think is required and actually sort of saying what is my space yes and for a long time I spent uh, you know my career worrying about oh, I'm not getting this technical evaluation skill that means I'm not going to be a hardcore actuary yeah um, and I'm now growing to learn that actually what being a good actuary is about is is really doing the work that you care about because when you do the work that you care about, you will innovate and you will use your skill sets in ways that actuaries who've come before you have never done. Yeah. Um, and that in itself it will take the profession forward and will, yeah. you know, take us to the cutting edge of our thinking and help us break down barriers and boundaries. I agree with that. I mean, it's, it's so interesting in that I think if you use, when you care about something, you're more inclined to throw your whole skill set at it, right? And I think it's similar to that, like, multi-sense learning. It's that multi-sense applying yourself to a problem because you care. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just a job. It's actually like it's part of you. Um, I remember when I would design products and I, if I cared about the product, you work harder. You, like, when you encounter a barrier, it's like, well, I'm going to overcome this because I have to, because I care. And when you don't care, you're kind of like, oh, maybe it's... It's, it's not meant to be, <laughs> you know, maybe maybe this this product shouldn't go to market. But when you care, there's a completely different type of work that you do. Absolutely. I, I've found that to be the case. And uh, you really then start to innovate in ways that you would never dream of. Yeah, yeah. No, honestly, like, you're like, is this me? <laughs> so, so, but thank you so much for your time. I think this was such an interesting podcast. And then you also have a million tabs open, which I love. Um, but really, I think also useful for students to hear and for listeners to hear that you can be many things. Mm -hmm. You don't have to just be one type of person or one type of actuary. Um, and I think that that is really important, that representation. So thank you. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure to <laughs> reflect and think about this beautiful journey. Yeah. And thank you for being a thinking environment for me. No, not at all. Not at all. It's honestly been a privilege. Yeah. Um, and to our listeners, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave a review on your preferred streaming platform. If you'd like to interact with us more, or add questions or topics to our pool of ideas, please follow our Instagram page at AS for Actuary or email us on asforactuary at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Take care.